uh, what's the difference between emergency accommodation, temporary accommodation, and interim accommodation? Um, that's a really interesting question, and it's one of those ones I didn't really think of because as workers we become so institutionalised within the sector that we, we just use this jargon and, and not really realise that actually it cannot be clear to an outsider what we're really meaning. And it's particularly difficult with this particular example because lots of professionals misuse terminology within this and, and the terminology, terminology itself is confusing. Um, so just to kind of go right, right from the start, and I'm afraid I'm going to have to be a bit boring and pedantic and talk about the law a little bit in terms of different sections, but ultimately, just to state the obvious, there's lots of types of accommodation which are only temporary. So, for example, a women's refuge, that's only accommodation which is temporary. You're not supposed to live there for very long. In actual fact, you're homeless whilst you're in, in a refuge, and therefore anyone in a refuge should be supported to make a homeless application whilst they're still there. The law allows you to make applications to multiple different local authorities all at the same time, and you can do it remotely. So in one sense, you might be actually applying to different councils in different corners of the country, and that's allowed, particularly in cases like domestic abuse where you know you might need to flee an area. So that's the just that's the first point to make is that lots of different types of accommodation are temporary, but that's not what we're talking within housing law or within the homeless application process. And again, I'm sorry, this is, I can't do this without sounding boring. But within the Housing Act 1996, which is the overarching legislation that, that, that basically um, di dictates how homeless applications should be undertaken, you've got two parts. You've got, one, you've got part six, which is all about the housing register and how you apply to the housing register and how you get you know, different kind of preferences within housing register. And then there's part seven, which is what we're talking about today, which is all about homelessness. And so within part seven of the Housing Act, temporary accommodation, that, that term temporary accommodation means something very specific. And it relates initially to something called section 188. Now, there's only, you know, there's only a couple of sections within the Housing Act or within part seven of the Housing Act that you really need to know. The most important is section 184, which is that duty to accept homeless applications and, and carry out adequate inquiries. But I would argue the next most important section is the section 188, which is essentially the duty to provide accommodation immediately if the homeless applicant, and that's the homeless person asking for help, gives the council reason to believe they might be homeless, might be eligible for assistance, which means roughly having recourse to public funds, and they might have a priority need. If those three criteria are met, local connection is not relevant, intentional homelessness is, is not relevant, but if those three criteria are met, the council has an immediate duty to make accommodation available. And many of us would call that initial section 188 accommodation to be temporary accommodation. But if you've been really pedantic, and it probably is always good to be pedantic with the law, a better term to use for that would be interim accommodation. And that word interim in this in this sense is that is the, is the accommodation you're given in the interim until a final decision is, is made on your homeless application. And just to kind of throw this additional term emergency accommodation, because many, again, many professionals use that term, the term emergency accommodation is not used in the Housing Act, as far as I know anyway. Um, you're, you're talking about temporary accommodation, but there's this additional kind of category of interim accommodation, which I'm going to explain a little bit more in a minute. But emergency accommodation, you know, although many professionals will call it that, you know, if you call the emergency out of hours uh, service on the council, in the council, um, you know, they might talk, talk about it as being emergency accommodation, but in reality, it, 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 what they mean is interim accommodation and, and, or, or on a, a broader term, temporary accommodation. So I'll try now and explain what the difference is between interim accommodation and what we might call temporary accommodation. Understanding that, that they are kind of transferable and they are used in, uh, kind of interchangeably sometimes. But as I say, interim accommodation, so that might be a B&B, &B, it might be a self-contained flat, it could be a hostel or whatever. That is interim accommodation which you are provided with from the point you make the application when you're homeless or so when the relief duty kicks in, just to throw some even more jargon into it. And and then you're going to be in that interim accommodation as long as the council has reason to believe you might be in priority need. So if in that 56 relief day, uh, 56 day relief period, the council finish their inquiries into priority need and they conclude that you're not in priority need, they can evict you from interim accommodation but most of the time they're going to finish their inquiries and they're probably going to reach a decision if they're doing it properly that you actually are in priority need and that means that when they reach that they, they, it's issued what's called a section 184 decision i did a video on how long it should take so between between eight weeks and 11 weeks they should be issuing that decision obviously many councils delay it for, for much longer but when they reach that decision the interim period is now over. They've now reached that decision. And, and the decision could be one of several things. So the first one, and this is the ideal one, is where the council's agreed that you are in priority need 
and you're not intentionally homeless. And that means that they've got a duty to provide accommodation to you up until the point where you get settled accommodation, an offer of settled accommodation. And that's, I guess, what the, the pedants in the world, uh, me being one of them, would call temporary accommodation. So you, you might even still be in the same address you were already in in, in interim accommodation, but the council's now accepted the full duty and you're in temporary accommodation and you could be in temporary accommodation for months, if not years, until you until you win a bid on the housing register or you get private rented accommodation provided through that through that, that mechanism. So you're going to be there and, and we call it temporary accommodation. But you'd also call it temporary accommodation in another situation where the council accepts you're in priority need, but this time they say you are intentionally homeless. And that means that you are owed a duty under section 190, I think, um, which is basically the, they have a duty to house you in temporary accommodation. And, and the wording is, you know, for a period of time that gives you a reasonable prospect of finding something else. So, so you know, the first thing to say here is that if you are intentionally homeless and you genuinely are, but you're in priority need, you still will get housed for the relief period, which is at least 56 days, plus this reasonable period of time, which, you know, could be between, you know, two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, depending on what your circumstances are. And the idea is in that situation that you should be looking for any other accommodation, whether it be supported accommodation or whatever, because the council's duty to provide temporary accommodation is going to end at some point. And there's another kind of situation that you'd be continuously be in temporary accommodation after the decision was reached, where actually they've realised that you don't have local connection and they are looking to refer you back to your home area. And just a few bits of local connection, which I've, I've said elsewhere, councils don't have to do it. It's, you know, it's, it's a choice. They don't have to look into local connection. They can just accept any, anyone, whether or not they've got local connection. But if, they, if, you, if you don't have local connection and they're going to try and refer you, it's got to be safe for them to refer you to that other accommodation. And also, the, 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 there's like a formal mechanism. It's not just the same thing as telling you to go to a different council. They have to contact that other council. The other council has to effectively agree that it's safe for you to return to that area. And the other council is going to pick up that duty, that, that longer term duty to house you, all of which time you're going to be in temporary accommodation, either from the first council or the second council. So as I say, that's yeah. I'm, it's not it's not it's not massive. Yeah, it's not the biggest, most important thing in housing law, but it does kind of help just people understand or get or get behind those different kind of bits of jargon that we tend to use. So interim accommodation is the accommodation that you're given under section 108 that basically takes you from the period of approaching to the period of or the point of, of having a decision made and then you know a pedant would say you're then in temporary accommodation whilst one of these other duties continue um so you know where, where you're in priority needs you're not intentionally homeless where they have a duty to provide settled accommodation or one of these lesser uh, duties where you might be intentionally homeless for example but they're still going to give you temporary accommodation for a few more weeks to, to, to give you a chance to find something else so yeah hopefully that's helpful I mean as I say it's probably more complicated than it's worth but it does just kind of clear up some of that language that's used because I've, I've seen people kind of talk about emergency accommodation and temporary accommodation and interim accommodation as if they're all different things and in some situations they are but sometimes they're really not um, so section 108 is the key you know the key thing there is that three things reason to believe that the applicant might be homeless might be eligible and might be in priority need the council shall make accommodation available to that person and it has to be suitable and it has to be re you know kind of you know it meets certain standards and so on uh, which is maybe me working another video about but that's kind of that's the absolute upshot, upshot of it so as i say hopefully that provides some clarity um you know it's not going to change the world but hopefully it will just kind of help people just get around or, or get get inside this kind of this world of, of legal jargon that's used within the homeless application process